Okay, here's how we would convert a staggered eclipsed conformation into a Newman projection of that um, staggered conformation. So I'm going to do this using this model. And I have six different color groups on there so that we don't worry about the groups, we worry more about the positions. So in this case, this is a staggered, and it is what is called a sawhorse representation. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into a bold and dashed wedge sawhorse using this model. So hopefully that kind of makes sense spatially. So the first thing that I do is I look when I look at this sawhorse, what I see is this light green group down to the carbon, across to this carbon, down to the purple. That's all in the plane of your screen. So when I write out that structure, I would write it out like this. And all three of those bonds then are in the plane. And if you don't believe me, then let me just take my model here and kind of rotate it. So you can see as I rotate that model back into the plane of the screen, all those bonds then are basically in the, in the screen, in the plane of the screen. So what groups then are pointing in front of, towards you, in front of the screen? Well, there's going to get bold wedges. So in this case, it's the white group. And it's this red group with the red group pointed up to the right, up to the right, and the white group pointing down to the left. So this would be the white group. This would be the red group. And then the light green group is in the plane as is the purple group. Okay, So those two bonds are basically pointing in front of the plane, in front of the screen, and they're pointing towards you so they get bold wedges. Now what about the green group? The green group is pointing behind the plane. And if you, again, don't like that, let's see. You can kind of see as I rotate it a little bit, you can see the green group is pointed back, as is the gray group on the right carbon. So if I put that in a little bit slightly different position, what we see is that the green group is to the left and down, and the gray group then, the gray group is up and to the right, but it's behind you. So this model then I've transposed into this sawhorse representation with the bold and dashed wedges. Okay, so hopefully that kind of makes sense in terms of this staggered sawhorse. Now, you might be saying, I don't really, I can't see that it's staggered. Well, that's why uh, Newman invented Newman projections. Of course, he didn't name it himself. It was named after him. But now what I'm going to do is change that into a Newman projection. So I'm going to be over here looking down the carbon-carbon bond, which means I'm going to be over here looking down the carbon-carbon bond. So what I'd like to do is when I'm looking at down that carbon-carbon bond, since I'm not really in virtual reality where I could walk over this, although we actually do have virtual reality software that would allow us to do that, but not today. Um, if I'm looking down this carbon-carbon bond, let's just do this. Let's just take my molecule, and now I'm looking down the carbon-carbon bond, and let me move it over here so it's away from this bond. So you can see that if you're over the, where my little pencil person is, and you're looking down that carbon-carbon bond, we are now looking down the carbon-carbon bond. Now, when we do that, the front carbon 
and the back carbon, the front carbon is towards you, and the back carbon is away from you. Well, no kidding. Um, but the front carbon has the light green group pointed up. So what you see is you see the front carbon. Why don't you see the back carbon? Because the front carbon's in front of the back carbon. And that's why Newman, when they when he came up with his projection, and it's Professor Newman that actually the Ohio State, um, one of the chemistry buildings named after him. That's why when he did this, he put the front carbon as the intersection and the back carbon as the circle so that we could see both sets of groups. And what you can see is that it is indeed staggered. So now if I'm going to put my groups in, I just have to remember this is my front carbon, this is my back carbon. And so what is, point, what is attached to the front carbon pointing straight up? Well, we could take this model and we could kind of rotate it and you can see it's the light green group. So that means the light green group is pointed straight up on the front carbon. What's off to the left? the green group, what's off to the right, the white group. And then for the back carbon, what's pointed straight down, the purple group, off to the right and up is the red, and the gray group then is up to the left. So that's exactly what we're seeing here. And so this is how we're converting the Newman projection into the, or sorry, the sawhorse projection into the Newman projection by looking down that carbon carbon bond. Okay. So the, diff, the perspective here is that if I wanted to convert this Newman projection up to a sawhorse, then what I would do is I would stand over here and now look at the carbon-carbon bond, which is the equivalent of me being over here, but now I'm just going to take this and put it in its, in its original orientation. So notice that the red and the white groups, when you're over here in this orientation, they're pointed towards you which we knew from up here, the red and the white groups are on the bold wedges. So that means that these two groups right here, that these groups were the ones on the bold wedge. And then what about the gray and the green group? Well, the gray and the green were basically on the dashed wedges. So that when we were looking at them, in this sawhorse, they were on the, the wedges, but then when we were over here, they would be to your left, like so. So in this case, these two groups, oops, these two groups correspond to the dashed wedges. So, that's how we can convert the sawhorse representation into the Newman projection and how we can look at the Newman projection and convert it back to the sawhorse representation. But to me, the critical pieces of this are the fact that I identify that this sawhorse is indeed staggered. I know that's the case because I am looking at the bonds that are in the plane of the screen. And if they look like a sort of S, then they're staggered. Okay. Well, that corresponds in the Newman projection to these two 
groups that basically when I'm over here looking at it are would be in the plane. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of trying to draw these with this model. And if you have a model set, you can go ahead and make this and try and do this yourself. But when I'm looking at this Newman projection, I see these bonds in the plane. That tells me it's staggered. And when I come over to the left and look down the carbon-carbon bond, the light green group then is the one that's pointed straight up. The purple's pointed straight down. And then my groups that are on the right were the ones that were pointing towards me over here. The ones that are to the left were the ones that were pointing over here. So hopefully that that makes a little bit more sense on how we convert the staggered sawhorse into the Newman projection and vice versa. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense.